everyone, and welcome to Mindful Health Alternatives. I'm Darlene Young from Arlington, and I'm the host of Mindful Health Alternatives that appears here on Cat TV Channel 15 every month. The goal of this series is to introduce you, our home viewers, and our uh, web viewers to a less stressful lifestyle through several different methods. Today, I'm fortunate to have as our guest, Jane Schaefer of The Yoga Place, which is located here in Bennington at 532 Main Street. Jane, welcome. I'm so glad you could come. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Oh, we are really excited that you could be here. Let me tell you a little bit about Jane. Jane started The Yoga Place, is that correct? Debbie Lewis and I started it Did together, you? yes. Okay. Yeah. And how many years ago was that, Jane? Roughly? I think it's about 15 years, 14 years. 14 years, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. So you've seen a lot of people and you've done a lot of mm -hmm. teaching and all that sort of good stuff. Yes. So it's, it's good. Now, Jane is a licensed psychologist with a master's degree. Yes. Okay. And a registered professional level yoga, yoga teacher with a 500 hour certification. That's correct. Right. Um, she um, has been teaching yoga well over 20 years um, and originally uh, got interested in it um, as a college student. Actually, after my daughter was born. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Alrighty, good. So we have lots of things to talk about. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Jane so she can tell you a little bit about the yoga place, um, about the different types of yoga that they offer there some of her instructors, uh, what she does besides yoga. Um, and she has a really much better pronunciation of some of the yoga terms than I do, <laughs> let me tell you. I'm not really versed on how to say some of the words. I do know how to say flow yoga, though. That is an easy one. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, Jane, welcome again, and take it away. So, how would you like me to begin? What's the best way to begin well, here? Well, why don't you tell us why you got involved with yoga okay. after I'll the birth there. of your daughter? Yeah. Um, actually didn't know anything about yoga. I was 27, pregnant, had a baby, mm -hmm. and I um, had moved to Brattleboro, was living in Guilford, Vermont. Um, we had moved here to be a part of a commune, mm -hmm. and then... Um, sort of separated from the commune and got our own place. Mm -hmm. And uh, after my daughter was born, my body was feeling very out of shape and uncomfortable. And I had a friend who said, well, I'm a yoga teacher. Why don't you come and take my yoga class? And after my very first yoga class, I was so relaxed and mm -hmm. I felt stronger, mm -hmm. healthier. And so I started doing yoga at home in between the weekly class, and I just kept up my practice off and on mm -hmm. for years. Uh, eventually moved to Bennington and was taking yoga three or four times a week with Alice McGovern, who okay. was teaching yoga at that time. And she said, well, this is silly. Why don't you go get your degree and get your yoga certification, learn mm -hmm. how to be a yoga teacher if you're going to take all these yoga classes. Sure. And so. I went ahead and did that. Now, how long does it take to become a yoga teacher? There are lots of different kinds of yoga teacher trainings. Okay. Some of them are a couple of weekends. Mm -hmm. Some of them are certifications through gyms. Oh, really? Okay. So I don't really know too much about them, but they start out kind of shorter and not as much time as far as I know, and then mm -hmm. they get more expansive and longer as you progress in your teaching experience. Okay. Um, at Kripalu, I trained at Kripalu, which is uh, the largest yoga ashram in the United States and was founded by Yogi Amrit Desai and some of his followers back in, good question, how long ago it was, I don't really know yeah. or remember right now. Now this is located down near the Lenox. It's in Lenox, yeah. right across from Tanglewood. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's. I just wanted our viewers to know that it's it wasn't halfway across spot. the world. No, it's right here. Okay. Uh, and <clears> my <throat> training was three 10 day, my initial training was three 10 day uh, resident sections. Mm -hmm. So 30 days altogether, I guess, okay. with teaching and supervision of the teaching experience. Really? Okay. 
so, and then I went on and got, I don't know, I'm one of those people has to go to school and get, you know, the next possible degree and then mm -hmm. the one after that. So it's just my nature. So uh, the next one was a 500 hour where you learn more advanced postures and more advanced assists. And then I've been teaching pretty much full time for about, I don't know, 15 or 20 years now. It's very good. Yeah. It's very, very good. I started teaching at the Wellness Connection at the hospi through right. the hospital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I was teaching more and more classes and I was thinking, boy, it'd be really nice to have a studio and I was looking around and somehow I hooked up with Deb Lewis and we found a place and we turned it into a beautiful yoga studio. That's very good. And Deb moved to Florida and I stayed and mm -hmm. now she's back here mm -hmm. and her studio is right next door to mine. So it's good. Yeah, so it's good. And I've heard lots, lots of good things about the yoga place and... Uh, yeah your studio and what you have to offer and uh, I've talked to <clears throat> excuse me a couple of people uh, Tracy Purdy Martin was here a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. and she did a show which will be on um, here shortly and um, then um, I've been in contact emailing back and forth with Sue Beal and she does your yoga nidra yoga nidra well said thank you see I'm learning <laughs> Um, as long as that is like an intro, do you want to sort of tell just a little bit about the Yoga Nidra? Sure. Okay. Yoga Nidra, um, well, let me tell you how I encountered Yoga Nidra. Okay, sure. I had no idea what it was. It just sounded like a lot of foreign language to me. And this is long after I'd become a yoga teacher. I'd never heard of this thing. And they said, they described it as yogic sleep. And I was like, what does that mean? What could yeah. that possibly mean? And it turned out that Amrit Desai, who founded Kripalu, was teaching it in New York City. And I had never met him. He had left Kripalu by the time I did my yoga teacher training. And I was sort of curious to meet him mm -hmm. because he's, he's a renowned guru. Yeah. In India, he's very famous as a guru and they're always inviting him over to teach and so on. Mm -hmm. So I went down and took this Yoga Nidra class mm -hmm. and I was so taken with it. It was so incredibly relaxing. What you do in Yoga Nidra is you're guided into a state that is just just that state just before you fall asleep. Mm -hmm. So you're awake and alert and yet your body is at a deep resting level okay. at the same time. Okay. So typically with Yoga Nidra you set an intention for your practice and that means you have a general idea of why you'd bother to do this particular mm -hmm. thing you might want to get healthier you might have health issues or psychic issues it doesn't really matter but you have some intention mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is drawing you forward in a certain direction okay. and yoga nidra is transformative in that it will help you get there yep. it's different from meditation mm -hmm. and it's different from guided relaxation um, it's something that the yogis have been doing for centuries okay. that, and it's a very powerful practice. Uh, we have it at the yoga, we have like a taste uh, it, once a week on Wednesdays at 12 o'clock Sue Beal guides a yoga nidra. It's, and the nice thing about yoga nidra is you don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. You can just sit in your chair or lie on the floor and be completely comfortable, relax. You will relax. Mm -hmm. Even if you think you can't relax, you will actually find that you are able to relax, sure. just like when you fall asleep, okay. as I said before. And um, so we have this class on Wednesdays at 12 to 12.30. That's good. Yeah. When one of my friends put me in touch with Sue, um, I said to my friend, well, you know, um, I can't get down on the floor. You know, it's just right. not feasible. And she said, don't worry, Sue will tell you what happens. And in the emails back and forth, I haven't started yet, but uh, will soon. Um, Sue said, you know, no need to have to get down onto the floor, darling. No, you can do it in not. the chair and make yourself really comfortable. So that's um, that was like a load off my mind because, like I said, I just can't get down on the floor. Um, and thoughts of when you hear yoga, you think of different positions and, mm. you know, things like that. And then as we were talking before we started the show, 
you talked also about chair yoga. Yeah. So as long as we're right here, let's talk about the chair yoga experience, mm -hmm. if we could. Okay. And then we'll get on to the more um, movable parts, if that's okay. So just to say this, chair mm -hmm. yoga is quite movable. Okay. <laughs> There's right. a lot of moving in chair yoga. Okay. It's, it's just that it's done from sitting in a chair rather than standing up and then getting down on the floor and standing up and getting okay. down on the floor. Right. Um, all different kinds of people take chair yoga. Mm -hmm. I have s someone who's 98 years old. Oh, cool. I have someone who's 30 years old. Mm -hmm. I have someone who's on oxygen. I have a fellow from the vet's home. Mm -hmm. I have someone with Parkinson's. So they're all different kinds of people okay. who, for whatever reason, you know, when you're 98, you don't feel like flipping up and down no. on the floor, no. you know? <laughs> so, and I one time had a dancer come and uh, she came to visit her mom. Mm -hmm. She was in some company in New York City mm -hmm. and she had hurt her foot and she thought, well, I'll just go to chair yoga with my mom. Yeah. And after the class, she said, oh, this is fantastic. This is a great workout. I had no idea. So she decided she was going to look up chair yoga in New York City and be able to take we'll it in the area oh, cool. so that she could heal. So chair yoga is really regular yoga but done from a chair. And we do do some standing postures holding on to the chair. But if you're not able to stand, then you can do them seated. Okay, very good. Yeah, it's a great practice. Yeah. And one of the things I wanted to say is when you're doing chair yoga at the end, we always have relaxation at the end of yoga class. Mm -hmm. In fact, I sort of think that a lot of times people come and they put up with the whole yoga class so they can just have the relaxation oh, at the well. end. <laughs> and it brings them back and makes them feel rested yeah. and peaceful and yeah. rounded and all. That's good. Yoga means to yoke together. Okay. It's a Sanskrit word. Mm -hmm. And it means to yoke together the body, the mind, and the spirit. Okay. Okay. Yep. So, um, and then the asanas are yoga postures, mm -hmm. and you can do the asanas in whatever modified form you need to do them in. Okay. There's no perfect yoga posture. Okay. Yoga is meant to be modified according to the person that's doing it. Okay. So if there was something that your yogi or your instructor was doing, mm -hmm. um, and you could sort of do it, but you couldn't, do it maybe as perfectly as exactly. the person you're still doing it and you're still getting something out of it um, because it's your way of doing it you the instructors you know one of the things you learn in yoga teacher school is how to help people with modifications and also how to help them not you know as Americans we're very type A and we're very <laughs> striving and we want to do things right yeah. Yep. Often. Yep. N not everybody, but many of us. And um, so one of the things we work with is just helping people relax a little bit so that they don't have to go get stressed mm -hmm. doing yoga. It's not the point. <laughs> That's not the point of it. Yeah. That's good. That's very good. And to learn to coordinate your breath and your movement in yoga is a very important piece. Mm -hmm. And we do that in chair yoga. We do that even in yoga nidra. Mm -hmm. So even when you're completely still, you're still breathing, your breath is always there. So working with the breath is useful. Because my next question when we're talking about breath and breathing, um, do you sometimes have people like hold their breath while they're doing it? I mean, you know, like trying to jive the two of them together or maybe they're apprehensive about what they're doing and they just forget to breathe. and. If they do, I mean, how do you get them to sync one another together? Well, it's a learning process. Okay. So I don't get people to do anything. I, okay. I understand okay. you're just yeah. saying that. Yeah. But yeah. Um, part of yoga is called pranayama, and that's managed breathing. Prana mm -hmm. is breath or life force. Okay. And yama means to manage. Okay. So pranayama, manage your breathing. And so we do some managed breathing exercises. Mm -hmm. That's one way we work with the breath. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And another way is I'm constantly saying, and breathe. Oh, that's a good. <laughs> and a take very good a breath. <laughs> <laughs> At one point in my career as a psychologist, I taught mindfulness-based stress reduction and relaxation. Mm -hmm. Maybe 20 years ago. I, it's hard for me to that's okay. get a lot of gray hair and forget. <laughs> and, um, one of the things I notice is I'll bump into someone who took my course 20 years ago and they'll say, 
you know, I still come to my breath. I still just pause and breathe. Mm -hmm. So we teach that in yoga class also. Okay. Just stop and take a breath. Okay. Take a yoga posture and take a breath. Uh -huh. Pause. Okay. And then on to the next something. Okay. So it's it that idea is threaded through everything. Right. Yeah. So yeah, you eventually it's a good question. <laughs> because I'm thinking like, okay, I know what I would am capable of doing, like learn something new and you're like holding your breath and it's like how do you just sync you know the two of them so that's good well in in the beginning in very beginner yoga mm -hmm. we talk a lot about that and okay. of course you can't do it in the beginning mm -hmm. and not to worry you know in the beginning you're gonna not even know what well what is that how do you do that and you'll be looking at me or your neighbor and you'll be trying to figure it all out so it takes you know six to nine weeks before you just your body begins to go oh I get it. Okay. And then your breath calms and goes with your body more easily. Okay, good. So, you know, there's always a learning curve. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. can't be perfect. You can't just jump, jump in jump and be in. perfect. <laughs> and if you are perfect, then we start to think there might be something wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, different types, other different types. Um, it talks about flow yoga and polo. Very um, good. Kripalu. Okay, I'm getting there. Um, vinyasa. 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 Mm -hmm. um, I have um, Hatha. Hatha yoga, yeah. Uh, and Vini yoga. Vini yoga. So, I know. What are they? Are they all the same? <laughs> are they different? Are they more advanced? Hatha yoga is the basic physical yoga. Okay. So there are... Um, several different forms of yoga. One is uh, bhakti yoga, which is the yoga of service. Okay. So you and your position here as an interviewer, you're doing a form of bhakti yoga. You're okay. serving your community. Okay. Yeah. Sort of like an outreach person type thing. Someone who just is concerned with making sure that people are well. Okay. T taking care. So. When Swami Kripalu came from India to live at Kripalu here in Lenox, mm -hmm. he had people who served him, who made his breakfast and who made sure that his robes were clean and that he had a proper place to sit and do his meditation because he didn't talk, he just meditated. Okay. And uh, so there's bhakti yoga. And I can't remember all the different yogas right in this moment because yeah, I'm a little okay. anxious. But hatha yoga okay. is physical yoga. Okay. And so all these other names are ways of teaching hatha yoga. Okay. Very good. They so you'll see that you'll see someone says, "Well, I teach hatha yoga." Well, anyone who teaches physical yoga, physical yoga postures is teaching hatha yoga. Okay. Okay. Very good. And then there are different styles of teaching. Mm -hmm. There are different forms of teaching. So for instance, I have a fellow who comes over from Brattleboro and he teaches Jiva Mukti in the Jiva Mukti style. Which is how? Jiva Mukti means freedom. Okay. So he teaches a style that includes vinyasa flow. Okay. And it's, it's always hatha. So it's always hatha. But in that particular style, you link different postures together in a flow. Mm -hmm. So that's what the flow refers to, okay. is the linking of different postures and linking the breath mm -hmm. with the movement. So that can be done in a chair, mm -hmm. maybe just on the floor. Mm -hmm. In my gentle yoga class, sometimes we're just working on the floor for the whole class. Mm -hmm. But we might do a flow from one posture to another to another, okay. linking through the breath. Yeah. Now, Jane, are there a lot of people that get into the yoga, the practice of yoga? Or, I mean, you know, are... I'm sure that as a teacher over the years, you've probably seen it wax and wane. Mm -hmm. um, More wax than wane, I would say. Okay, so, <laughs> but people really get into it? Yoga is really popular. Is it? It's gotten more and more popular. Uh, when I first started teaching, I was teaching it through mindfulness based stress reduction mm -hmm. and relaxation. They had a component that was yoga, okay. teaching yoga. And not that many people were doing yoga. Mm -hmm. 
then the athletic teams started incorporating yoga into their training regi reg regime regimens or yeah. regimes, yeah. whatever the word would be. And um, now, you know, they all most of the gyms have people teaching yoga. Okay. There's a component in the gym. Yoga classes are mm -hmm. given. There are separate yoga studios. We have here in Bennington. My studio, I think, is the predominant one that's been mm -hmm. here for the longest, but others come and go. Mm -hmm. And um, I see more, I think the shift that I'm seeing now is more men coming to yoga. Really? Yeah. So men yeah. are really getting into it now, too? Yeah. That's good. And people who are strong really appreciate yoga because they're already built up you know all their muscles mm -hmm. but then that stretching piece that lengthening piece that relaxation piece yeah. because especially in the gym I see this and the yoga is a little different in the gym there's well I'm not gonna get into that because it's not my thing <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay um so it's it's really um really really good um another question I had for you when we talked about um the guru yeah. And you said he wore his robes and, you know, mm -hmm. like people waited on him and he did a lot of meditating and stuff. Um, do they, number one, teach the classes, okay, if you were to go to like... Um, Kripalu? Yes, in Lenin. So uh -huh. Would he be there to teach? Would he always be in his robes or... Would he go out <laughs> into the main? You mean how weird is it? Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, how much does he participate? <laughs> some of my uh, viewers are probably thinking, "Okay, darling, just spit it out." Um, no, I mean, would he dress as a normal um, person, or would he continue to wear his robes as a so here's a sign the, of let, distinction? Let me respond to that. Okay. I don't know about Swami Kripalu because he passed. Okay. So he's no longer with us, although his spirit mm -hmm. still okay. lives on. Yep in Kripalu, through Kripalu. And Amrit Desai is also a guru, and he became a d disciple of Swami Kripalu. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you like, I'll tell you the story of Swami Kripalu, but sure. in a moment, let me get on okay. with the guru Alrighty. part. <laughs> so the guru, guru means teacher. Okay. Yeah. And the idea of the guru is that they have a certain quality of grace that they've received from their teacher and it's coming through them and they're giving it to you. Okay. Yes, they do. Uh, they won't participate in a class, but they'll give a class. Mm -hmm. So Amrit Desai down in Florida, mm -hmm. he'll teach a yoga class. Okay. And every morning he teaches. He gives, uh, they call it a Dharma talk. So okay. he's giving some teachings. Mm -hmm. One time I was there and there were only three or four of us attending this talk. And I asked him after, I said, you know, Gurudev, th this is just three or four people. How do you feel about that? You, use, you often teach, you know, thousands of people right. at one time. And he said, well, it's my dharma to teach. I have to teach. Okay. So it doesn't matter to me if there's one person or 100,000 people. Mm -hmm. I have to teach. Okay. So that's part of what being a guru is. Okay. Also in the, in the tradition... Uh, the Kripalu tradition, the guru can actually give you Shaktipat, which is energy. Okay. And you can receive that from the guru, and then you're receiving the grace, okay. and you have that to give others. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but, however, the mm -hmm. guru is still a man or a woman. Right. So there either. are women yes. gurus? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Okay. okay. Absolutely. Okay. And they have lives and personalities, and you know, sometimes they have a cranky day, or they <laughs> just they, like everybody. You know, <laughs> they got to wake up with a stiff neck, and they don't feel so good. So, you know, they're people also, but they have this sort of higher, higher um, responsibility. Okay. All right. A little bit different, I think. I'm not sure how that relates to, say, I mean, we know about the Dalai Lama. Mm -hmm. You know, it's obvious. Yeah. When you see him, you just go, oh, I get it. Yeah. He's a guru. Yeah. He's a Rinpoche, they're mm -hmm. called in his tradition, teacher. So it's sort of like that. You kind of get it when you're in the presence of one of these, these okay. people with the div divine energy moving through them. Yeah. I mean, it must be wonderful to just be able to experience them, you know? I mean, just 
it just must be wonderful. I mean, it's wonderful, but the really wonderful part is that divinity is in all of us, mm -hmm. and their job, Gurdjieff, my my teacher says, their job is to reflect that perfection back to you, so you can know that you have it. Very, yeah, interesting. It's, Okay. It's a little deep, I get it, but <laughs> Yeah, but no, it's but it's really it brings the it job of the guru. All around because I mean you're learning about the yoga. You can learn about the guru, you can learn about the divine intervention, um, you know, and the psyche and it's just all, all like it said in some of the literature I've been reading, is like a union with wholeness. Exactly. Okay. So one of the things I think people experience when they come to yoga classes mm -hmm. is that everybody's doing the same thing, but everybody's doing it a little bit differently, and yet we're all one. We're all breathing the mm -hmm. same air. Mm -hmm. We're giving the same air to each other right. to breathe. I mean, at a very basic level, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> our energy is kind of mingling. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That unity is part of yoga. All right. I am so glad you're here because you are really educating me and telling me a lot that, um, and I'm sure our viewers um, have never even thought of, um, how do I want to say, not knowing enough about yoga. So what you'll find when you take your first yoga class, which mm -hmm. I know you can do now that you're inspired, mm -hmm. and you can, I'm, I'm trying, I'm working on getting a, a street level chair yoga class okay. so that people who can't get up the stairs to my studio can take yoga, okay. or you can watch it on a DVD on or on Cat TV, Cat TV right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, you begin to actually experience that, and you may not know what to call it. You know, people just are relaxed at the end of class. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways I know they're relaxed is that things get left. I get phone calls, oh, I left my purse, or did you see my keys? <laughs> and my, yeah, somebody's yoga mat is over in the corner. <laughs> um, what Jane is referring to, um, one of our volunteers, Tom Addison, has been working with you yeah. on a, mm -hmm. Um, a DVD to present, um, and it is on chair yoga. Yes. Okay. That one. So it will be playing here um, at Cat TV, um, and um, you'll be able to enjoy that as well. Uh, you can uh, give us a jingle, um, or you can check the uh, the schedules um, on www.catamountaccess.com or on Saturdays in the Bennington Banner. Um, there is a schedule and you can check out, you know, when the uh, program will play. Okay. So do you want to share your story now? My story about Swami Kripalu? Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, Swami Kripalu was, um, I'm not exactly sure what his profession was. I think he was a cow herd or something like that. Mm -hmm. And mind you, this is in India, in a okay. small rural yeah. area of India. Mm -hmm. And um, he somehow came in contact with this man. Mm -hmm. And he was sort of taken with this man, and he wanted to become his follower. Mm -hmm. And the story, a story goes, story a story, right? This man turned out to be an incarnation of the god Shiva. Okay. Yeah, so this is not so uncommon in India. Right, right. <laughs> this would be... But we have, you know, we have people with stigmata and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. So it's not totally off the no, charts no, no, for no, Americans. No. And um, he followed this man and learned from him and studied with him. Mm -hmm. And then he became a teacher himself and he had followers. Mm -hmm. During his lifetime, he built an ashram in India that's ex very beautiful. And um, his his uh, followers have carried on the tradition of Kripalu Yoga. Okay. He was a very great teacher. He, if you read some of his teachings, they're just, his thing was, he was, he's called the Pilgrim of Love. Okay. I should probably be touching my mic. Uh -huh. The Pilgrim of Love. The Pilgrim of Love. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to look at that. Um, when you say um, the word Ashram? Ashram. Um, it's like a school? 
ashram is like a school uh, where people go to devote their life to living by the principles of yoga. Oh, so they can live there all the time? Mm -hmm. I mean, sort of maybe like a monastery type thing or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The okay. original Kripalu here in Lenox yeah. was an, ash, uh, an ashram that they called a vowed community. Okay. So when people joined, they gave all their worldly goods and typically they were younger people so they probably mm -hmm. didn't have that much world, many worldly right, goods. Right. And then they served in the ashram for no pay but they got their okay. room and board. Okay. Good. They did gardening and, you know, took care wow. of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's fascinating too. It's like, whoa. <laughs> um, we have probably a few more minutes and I just wanted to touch with you um, about Easy Does It Yoga uh -huh. on uh, Tuesday mornings. Um, it, I ran across that mm -hmm. and um, it says that you can ease into yoga. And do you want to just tell us a little bit about that program and uh, how people can get in touch with you and... Um... Yeah, a couple of things about my studio. One of the things is, um, no, that's right. although I have a fee schedule, mm -hmm. I am always happy. I am more interested in people taking yoga. So I do trades, I have people pay what they can afford to pay. Okay, that's good to know. Some people don't pay anything, mm -hmm. it's fine. Okay. Most good. people who don't pay anything though, they, they don't feel, they feel a little funny about it, so mm -hmm. I give them jobs. Okay. I have lots of jobs for people to do. <laughs> okay. And so anyway, Easy Does It Yoga, um, I just thought up the, the title. It comes from one of the slogans that you see in, 12, in the rooms of the 12-step programs. 12-step when, when programs, AA, mm -hmm. Al-Anon, whatever. I okay. don't know what all, they, them are, okay. what all of them are. And um, I just thought, well, that, that would be a good way to begin your day. It's a good way to kind of ease into yoga, the idea of easing into it rather than as we were talking about before, rather having to be perfect mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. I had a child who, she she never mm -hmm. liked to do mm -hmm. anything unless she already knew how to do it. And I think a lot of us are like that, yeah. you know? <laughs> we, we don't are. really want to do it. Unless <laughs> so that was my idea on yeah. that, was mm -hmm. to just make yoga really, really accessible. I also have a class called Very Beginner Yoga. Okay. Same idea. Okay. I used to call it very, very, very beginner yoga, but somebody <laughs> said that's way over the top, Jane. <laughs> Just have very beginner, that'll cut it. Okay, good. Well, that's good to know. Well, I want to really thank you for being here today. This has been, oh, so truly enlightening. I mean, I'm just amazed. My head is going like, whoa, you know, and I'm <laughs> sure that the folks out there in uh, TV land are really um, thinking about different things now. I really do. And I'd like to thank everybody um, for being with us today. Um, we've been talking with Jane Schaefer of the Yoga Place here in Bennington, which is located at 532 uh, Main Street. Um, it's up over where Panache used to be, correct? It's now over the DMV. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. And um, you can get a hold of her at 802-447-0393. Or at www.benningtonyoga.com. Um, so let her know if you're interested in any other kinds of questions, or if you're interested in uh, taking a class with her, or one of the other instructors. If you can't remember how to get a hold of her, you can always get a hold of me here at Cat TV, 802 442 8868 or uh, Darlene at dot com, And I just want to remind you that with all of our um, different exercise programs um, and the programs that we talk about here, um, if you have any questions about your physical or capable capabilities, um, you should check with your physician, your primary care physician, mm -hmm. to make sure that it's okay for you to partake in any of these um, modalities that we talk about here on the show. Um, so again, I wanna thank you and 
come back and see us again. We'll be back next month with someone else. And Jane, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This was great. Thank you. <laughs> Bye now. Bye.